in that it all happens in a really, really small area, the rev range, yeah. and then all of a sudden you're at the rev line and you're changing gear. Yeah. And so uh, it's like it gets to 11,000 and it's all hell breaks in. She's like, shit! Yeah, and then all hellish. of a sudden you... Hi folks, Toad Hancock's here with Visordown.com. And Harry McKenzie with Visordown.com. And today, you guys, we, and girls, sorry, we have been riding the Panigale V4S and the Kawasaki ZX-10RR. Remind me, where have we been? pretty much all over the Chiltern Hills. It's yes. been good fun. It's been really, really good fun. Yeah, it has. It's been a good day. I was saying earlier that um, it seems like all the places that we've stopped have been really, really close together and then you reminded me that it was just that we were going really, really fast yeah. for most of it. Yeah, it really did feel like it. I think the last stretch that we actually rode was probably the tamest um, <laughs> because the, the amount of focus that these bikes require it really does sort of tie you out so if you're out you know we've been out how many hours have been out so well we met at about half ten this morning yeah. and it's now it's, it's ten past six <laughs> so we've been having it anyway it's been fun so what have you been riding mainly so mainly uh, the bike that I picked up was the ZX10 RR so the Ninja ZX10 RR um, and yeah it's the first day I picked it up the weather was absolute dog shit so I could hardly get to know the bikes. Some Caprelli Super Courses. Or is it Diablo? It's not Diablo uh, SP, uh, Super Corsa SPs. Super Corsa SPs. So if anyone that doesn't know, those in the wet, eh, 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 you know, game show. Eh, eh. So um, yeah, but today we've actually, I've, I've, I say I've actually had a really good chance to actually sort of learn the bike and just get a feel for it. And incredible machine. I'm a bit lost for words, really. Um, super bikes. I think ever since 2009, they've just started, every, every single model has tried to step it up in some way, tried to get more power, tried to, to, to be more nimble, be more flickable, um, you know, and this is the best, most expensive Kawasaki model you can get, and uh, yeah, you can, you can definitely feel it. from the H2. It. Oh, yeah, sure, of course. But this is a proper out and out sports bike. The H2 is a bit... I don't want to call it fat, but it's a bit fat, isn't it? It's, ch yeah, it's, it's chunky. It's a chunky, it's chunky. monkey. Yeah, it's but chunky. this is a proper spell super bike. So, what? Well, I'm a bit confused. So, I know what a ZX10R is. So, what's the ZX10RR all about? Right, Why? This is, yeah, see, I've, I've done my studying and uh, it, it's, there's so much detail to this because there's three models of ZX10. So, there's the standard uh, KRT replica, um, which is, looks the same as the, what was it, 2018 World Superbike. And you've got the SE, which has got the electronic uh, suspension and, and, and those gizmos. And then you've got the RR, which is a special, very special model. Only 500 have been made. And the reason why they've been made is to make them uh, World Superbike homologated. So they have to build 500 production bikes, sell them to the public, and then they can use that bike in World Superbike. So that's what it was made for. Right, okay. So in terms of the riding experience, I spoke to you this morning and you, you were saying that I think one of the things, you, one of the words used was almost like underwhelming because mm. it's, it all happens quite high up the rev range. Do you, do you still feel like that or was that just how you were riding it? Yeah, it's, it really is, it's, it's so tame, that's what surprised me most I reckon. It's low down, anything under 4000 RPM and it just, it's, there's not really much to it, it's very tame, uh, it feels more like a 600. And it's only until you get to about sort of like 7,000 RPM that it starts to come to life a bit. You think, oh, hang on, this has it's got a bit of power. And then and you get to 10,000 and you think, <laughs> oh, this has got even more power. And you just carries on pulling. But it, it is very peaky. And I think that's what the ZX10s have always been known for. You know, Dixers are known for their mid-range punch. Ducatis, their low-end, obviously, you know, low-end grunt. But uh, the, the, the Kawasaki's have always been a very peaky. And uh, this is no different. I rode it earlier on, not for very long, but I, I did a couple of miles on it and, and you know, I was pushing on pretty quick, but it's weird because it almost, it's almost two stroke like in that it all happens in a really, really small area of the rev range. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're at the rev line and you're changing gear. Yeah. And so uh, it's like it gets to 11,000 and it just all hell breaks it. She's like, shit. Yeah, and then all of a sudden hellish. you've got to click another gear because you're on the limiter. Absolutely. And that, that's exactly it. You know, it's, 
it feels like warp, so you go into this sort of warp speed zone, it, it just doesn't <laughs> stop pulling. Next thing you know, you got to, you find the next gear and it just carries on again and it's like relentless. And then the corner arrives. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> um, the Brembo. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, honestly, uh, genuinely, like that's what surprised me most. I thought, oh, bloody hell, this is going to be a monster and uh, I'm going to have to step it up. Because I've got CBR, you know, 1000 um, Fireblade at home. So I'm used to riding 1000cc bikes, but that, you know, I said that's a 10 year old bike, but this, these modern super bikes, I don't yeah. know what kind of juju they put in them, but they're on another level. Oh, Where's honestly. it going to end? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably in a bush. <laughs> probably, most likely. <laughs> so Harry spent most of the day riding the uh, Kawasaki, and I've been playing on the Panigale, although we did have a little swap and. Um, I've got to say that when I picked the Ducati up from Silverstone, um, I had it in the lowest engine mode, so it was kind of like the tamest riding mode, which is just uh, street mode, I think it's called, or road mode. And it's uh, supposed to be the softest, and it's supposed to be the most comfortable and, e and easiest going. And as you do, you get on, and then I went up to sport mode, and I rode that for about a mile, and then I went into race mode, and race mode is completely, like, it's batshit insane. It's The throttle response is like a light switch. Yeah. The suspension is unforgiving and firm. The ABS is only on the front wheel, um, so you're gonna tail out, slide the back end around, and it's just a really, really formidable beast to get your head around. And I think I kind of rode it like that, then until we got here this morning um, and I found it I did find it a bit intimidating mm. uh, it was a little bit like I didn't want to push it I didn't want to try and find the limit with it because it's so fucking scary yeah and I think that's it you know it's like if you, anyone's seen a V4 advert it's so dramatic it's so uh, cinematic and everything's you know echoing around and it this is exactly how that bike makes you feel it's like mm. you get on and you think Jesus Christ like this is this is a beast this is yeah. an animal um, and that's where it differs so much from from the, the, the RR. It's mm. just yeah, you can. I suppose you can pull it around town, but it's not what it's designed for. No, and you can tell it doesn't like it. Yeah, it complains all the time. Thirty mile an hour through Henley on Thames earlier, where we took some pictures, and it's just like bucking and weaving, and you can tell it just it wants to live higher up the rev range. But uh, I spent, to be honest with you, I, I've left race mode well alone and I've just been going around in sport mode and in sport mode it's a completely different animal you, you've got a lot more confidence because the throttle response isn't so knife edge mm. the suspensions really actually for a superbike it's fucking it's pretty plush yeah. um, it's not jarring at all it doesn't seem to tie itself in knots very much um, and it's just a, it's a it's a nice experience I've grown to love it a lot more this afternoon in road mode than I had in race mode mm. Which is it's a bit weird. You think that's counterintuitive because you think like the more power, the more speed, the better it is. But that's only good if you can can use it all. Yeah, and, th and this is it. I feel like there are certain bits that are so unrefined about this bike. You know, like the, the, when you, when you're at the top of the rev range, it, it's ballistic. There's you're you're, fo you're so so focused on just staying alive. It seems, but as you say, the electronics it, it does keep it all in shape. That's the refined bit about this bike. The electronics are really second to none. I think that's probably where the DK, uh, the, DK, the Kawasaki starts to lack a little bit. It's very analog. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like it's it's got engine braking, it's which you can adjust. It's got cornering ABS. It's got all the, it's got all the things you would need, but it's just not as refined as the Ducati, I find. So could we say then that the ZX10 is like a Steinway concert grand piano, <laughs> and this is like a Nord synthesizer yeah, that yeah. Good analogy? That's, that's pretty that's pretty sick okay. yeah i agree for all the audio files out there and and that's that's the beauty of them though like the price okay the, the panigale is obviously more expensive mm -hmm. right, it's got the electronic suspension and yep. i suppose in an ideal world we could have tested the se um but i think the contrast is quite nice yeah that's what i like about it so you've got the green machine that's completely analog pretty much you know fairly unrefined but incredible motorcycle to ride and then you've got the gorgeous stunning completely uh, kitted out uh, you know it's like a G-Shock watch you know you've got dials of what sort of meter you're at and all kinds of stuff and yeah. the dash is incredible to be honest with you, okay let's get straight to that question then which one would you put in your garage honestly that <laughs> both um, oh, wait, obviously if you could only have one yeah if I could only have one 
Well, it's got to be the Kawasaki in it, really, because for what I would use it for, it'd be a much better everyday bike. And right. I know that seems silly to say, oh, 1,000 cc everyday bike, but you've got you've got the engine modes that can change. You've got six, five or six levels of traction control that you can swap on the on the on the go just with a little switch. Yeah. It's very like uncomplicated. It's not. It's just a very kind of raw bike, and I quite like that. I've that's how I grew up when I was one, but I, I, I didn't fantasize about the next electronic gizmo. I just wanted a bike that I could ride and enjoy mm. and not be like fit for 15 minutes faffing around on the dash, getting all the engine modes right and everything like that. I just <laughs> want to get on and go, and that's what the Kawasaki provides, I feel like, for me. See, for me, no, I, I, I've got two trains of thought. If I was going to buy a bike that I was going to ride every day, and use it to go to the office, use it to go for go and see the BSB at a weekend or go on a bit of maybe do a little bit of light European touring and then go on a few track days, I'd take the ZX10. But if I already had that bike in my garage and I wanted something that was just pure theatre and excitement and this proper pandemonium gets you in the by the scruff of the neck. Yeah. I'd get the, the Panigale because it is a proper experience right yeah. now, I think. It's, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm very rarely lost for words. I'm normally a pretty chatty cat, but there is something very special about that bike. But I feel, as you say, every day, not a chance. No. Um, and I suppose we probably need the money first, right? Yeah, we would. Because this is only Lent. Yeah. Well, you could just like not give it back. True, I mean, that's probably true. A good idea. Move to Bermuda. So, there you have it. If you want us to tell you which bike we like the most and which one we don't, it's both of them. Sorry, we're not very good, are we? <laughs> we suck, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching Visordown.com. He's Harry, I'm Toad. Catch you next time. Peace.